In today's video, I'm going to be unboxing and setting up the TP-Link AC1900 Smart Wi-Fi Router. And the first step to doing this is to remove this outer plastic covering. So I'm going to do that, get it out of the covering, and let's see what is inside the box. I've removed the plastic covering. Let's pull the tray out. Let's see what's inside. The first thing you see is the router itself. I'm going to put this aside for now. We'll look at it soon. And as with most other routers, you have some documentation. And the most important piece of documentation is this card with the SSIDs and password on it. We'll need this to set the router up, so make sure to hold on to this. It also comes with a power adapter and an ethernet cable. Now that we've got everything out of the box, we can actually start setting the router itself up. And in order to do this, you need to remove the plastic covering from the top of the router and the plastic covering on the antenna. You want to be really gentle while peeling this plastic off so as not to damage the antenna. So gently peel the plastic covering off the router and then gently peel the covering from the antenna. And once you remove the plastic covering, it reveals a beautiful piano black finish. Now the router has quite a few switches and ports on the back. I'll walk you through the function of all of these very briefly. You have the port for the power plug. You have the power on off switch. You have a reset button, a USB port, so you can connect any USB hard drive to the router and turn it into a network drive. You have the blue port, which connects to your internet service provider's modem. And you have four ethernet ports to connect wired devices, if you wish to do so. You also have a WPS connect button on the right hand side. Now for the next step, you want to connect your internet service provider's modem to the router. Now if your internet service provider's modem already has an ethernet cable coming out of it, feel free to just connect that to your router. If not, you can use the provided cable to connect these two devices. So let's do that. So connect one end of the cable to the ethernet port on your modem and plug the other end into the blue port on your router till you hear that click. And now we're gonna connect the power adapter to the router. So plug this end into the power port on the back of the router and then plug this adapter into a power outlet. But before you plug this into a power outlet, make sure that your modem is in fact turned on and connected to the internet. And if for some reason your router doesn't turn on when plugged in, you're gonna to have to turn it on by pressing the power button on the back. And once you plug this into a power outlet, you should see the power indicator on the front light up and go through its boot up sequence. Once the boot up sequence begins, you'll see the first four lights on the router flash and sometimes even turn off. And when everything's done, you'll see that the first four lights on the router will turn a solid green. This could take a few minutes. And after a few minutes, as you can see here, the first four lights to the left of the router all turn solid green, which is a good thing because that means we can proceed with the setup of the router on a computer or a smartphone. In our case, we're going to be setting it up using a Windows PC. So let's go ahead and do that. However, you can use the TP-Link Tether app to do this if you should choose to. Now the setup on either Mac or PC is pretty much identical. In our case, as I said, we're going to be doing it on a PC. So in order to begin setting this up, the first thing you're going to do is go into your Wi-Fi settings. And in order to do this on a Windows computer, you can tap on the Wi-Fi icon on the bottom right hand corner in that tray down there. Tap on that and the list of available networks opens up. You want to scroll down this list to find the networks that are listed on the card that came with your router, the card that we talked about. And I found those two networks here. Now, if you can see the network that ends with the word 5G, I recommend selecting that as you'll have better speeds with this connection. So I'm gonna select that and hit connect. Next, it asks you for the network security key, which was again, the password that is on the card. So let's enter that and then hit next and let's wait for it to connect. And as you can see here, it says connected comma secured and that's fine. So let's proceed to the next step. For the next step, we need to open up a web browser. 
I highly recommend Google Chrome, but you're welcome to use any other decent browser like Firefox or Edge. So I'm going to open up Google Chrome and once that browser opens up, I'm going to type in tp-link-yfi.net and then hit enter. And on the next page, it asks you to create an admin password. Now this isn't the password for the Wi-Fi on the router. This is just a password you use to change the settings on the router. Now most people will do this just once and probably never access this interface ever again. However, I recommend remembering this password in case you need it in the future. So let's go ahead, create a password and then click let's get started. And on the page that opens up, it'll ask you to pick your time zone. So I'm going to go ahead and pick my time zone and then hit next. And on the next step, it asks you what kind of IP setting you want to use. Leave it on dynamic IP. You don't really need to change this and then hit next. Now from here on out, what I recommend doing is clicking on the basic tab. There's a tab up on top called basic. Click on that. And what you're going to do is go to the sidebar on the left and click on the wireless button. And here you have the option of changing the network name and passwords of the two Wi-Fi networks associated with your router. I highly recommend changing the network name and password on both of these networks. And once you're done changing that, hit save to save your changes. Now make sure to remember these passwords because you'll need this for any device that needs to connect to your network. Now once you hit save, the computer will boot you out of the network that you were connected to. You'll need to go back in and reconnect to the new Wi-Fi networks that you created. In my case, I'm going to connect to the ones that I just created. So enter your new password and connect to the new network. Now at this point, you're pretty much ready to connect to the internet and you can continue to use the internet without doing any further setup. However, I do recommend one additional step to ensure that your router has the latest firmware version. And in order to do that, you're going to go into the top right hand corner and click on the word update and wait for that page to open up and then scroll down to the online upgrade section and click upgrade and then click yes. And this process could take a few minutes. You don't want to do anything till this process is completed. And once it's completed, your router will most likely reboot. And as you can see, once the router is done rebooting, it will log you out of that interface. Now you really don't need to do any additional setup. You can log back in if you'd like to, but if you don't, you're welcome to just go ahead and continue to enjoy using the internet. And I'm just going to test it out to make sure everything's working. So I'm going to go onto YouTube and see if I can play a couple of videos to make sure everything is working right. And there you go. As you can see, the router is now connected to the internet and ready to use. Now I will be doing a full review of this router in a separate video where I'll be doing some speed tests on this device. And I'll also be comparing it to some other very popular routers. So stay tuned for that video. Hope this video has been useful. If it has, please hit that like button and subscribe to stay tuned for more reviews, unboxings, and how-to videos. Thanks for watching and see you next time.